guess what? I did it! Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Old Crows Homestead. This is Shelly. I'm really excited about this video because um, this is the follow-up video to um, our propagating elderberry experiment. Um, so we actually shot that video mid-January, I think it was, like around January 18th, I think is what I looked up. And um, I'll put a link to that video down below so you can go check that out. But we, I, I had some elderberry, I think a previous owner had planted like one elderberry bush out front and then it's kind of spread. So now there's probably like, there's the one big one and three or four smaller ones up there. Um, I wanna try to move those, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or not. Um, but I did go up mid-January and take some cuttings off of the great big one. And check this out, y'all. Isn't this awesome? So um, we actually, there was, uh, let's see, I've got two, four, six, seven of these. Um, I started out with eight, but in the previous video, you see that I said that one of them, I wasn't sure if it was going to do any good because it seemed like it was really dry and brittle and not like these were, and it didn't, it didn't grow at all. So, um, but I want to show you what we have here. Check out those roots. Isn't that awesome? I'm so excited. Um, so what I did was um, every few days, when I first put them in here, every few days I would, um, actually it was like every other day, I would uh, take them out and rinse off the roots a little bit, kind of gently, and put fresh water back in the glass because um, it will start to get like, I don't know if it's good or bad to be honest with you, but it'll start to get what looks like to me kind of mold on it. And um, it just didn't seem to me that that was a good thing. So I would take them out every other day, gently rinse them off and put fresh water in there. And I set them in a window in our dining room. <coughs> and this is what happened. So I want to show you, let me take one out. Well, this one's actually, <clears throat> this one's actually got, this sprouting on the side here. Um, but all of those, and, and elderberry has, I don't know if you can see them, but they have these little spots all along and they're kind of bumpy. And so the part that was in water, all of those started forming roots, all of those little bumps along. Um, so obviously this has, you know, a pretty good root growing right there and everything. But um, all of those little bumps that are on the stem or the, branch when they were submerged in water they started growing roots and um and then these were just from the nodes because I cut the the top of it off and just just above a couple of the nodes and the nodes just started growing I'm really super psyched about this so what I'm going to do next and honestly I could I could probably just keep doing what I'm doing. It probably would not hurt these. It doesn't seem to be hurting them at all to stay in this water. Um, however, I kind of feel like they need to go in dirt. Um, so, so some of our plans for 2022 is to dig a swale that is um, actually on the other side of our chicken run. And um, that was a suggestion that we got from uh, William from Permacastures Farm when he came and did a consultation, a permaculture consultation on our farm. Um, and I wanna do that. We're um, right now um, getting everything together to, we're gonna rent a mini excavator and bring it out and dig that out. And only because we have some um, other um, earthwork stuff that needs to be done. And so our hope is that we, we can rent a mini excavator and, um, we've got to line that up with some time that Randy can take off and I can take off just so we can get the most use out of it while we have it. Um, but 
I want to plant some of these elderberries around that swale, along with some fruit trees, along with some um, berry bushes and all of that kind of stuff. I want to be able to put some of these out there. Um, I have some other places that I want to plant these, but I definitely want some to go around that swale. Um, so um, I feel like, I just feel like these need to go in dirt. And because it's, we're looking at like maybe late April for that to happen, digging out that swale, um, maybe even early May. So I just, I feel like they would do better if I had them in a little pot of dirt. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, um, you know, pull these out of here and get them planted. So I have some of these, I wanna say they're like five inch pots. Um, anytime that you go to, uh, if you ever buy, you know, like flowers or, you know, stuff from a greenhouse or even from Lowe's, maybe you get some good deals. I always like to hit the, um, the clearance thing at Lowe's. I, I always go look at that first before I go look at flowers and, and I'm getting more and more where I just start flowers from seed that I like, um, or I am more prone to buy my flowers from the farmer's market instead of big box stores. So, you know, if I see something that I want, I'm kind of supporting, um, you know, local, that kind of thing. But um, save these, don't toss these out because this is the perfect thing to use something like this for. If you don't have any of these and you need something to kind of up pot into, um, they had these, they were a two pack at the dollar store for a buck. And, um, they're actually probably a little bit heavier plastic than these might last a little bit longer, but these were free. Oh, well, I mean, you know, they're free after you take whatever you bought out of it. Um, but I just poked a couple holes because I only had five of this size. I poked a couple holes in the bottom and, um, I'm going to use that. I'm also going to use this. So, um, just full disclosure, I'm not a professional <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know a lot about gardening. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, however, um, a lot of the channels that I watch and I've really gotten, um, hooked on this guy. I think he's in California, Northern California, maybe, or so, maybe Southern California. I don't know, but it's, um, Abundant Gardening. I think that's the name of the channel and I will put a link to his channel down below. But one of the things that I love about his channel is that, um, he, not only does he have great gardening tips, he's a really good gardener and, um, he has great ideas about how to, to do things in the garden. He gives all kinds of tips about money saving ideas, which is right up my alley. Um, and I just, I don't know, I've gotten tons of great ideas from him. So um, one of the things that he talks about every time that he up pots or he plants something like this or whatever, he will throw a little bit of this into the hole that he's planting it in and it just helps. It helps to minimize um, uh, transplant shock. It helps them grow. Let's see on the back, it says it promotes vigorous plant and root growth. Um, decreased amount of watering and fertil fertilization, enables the soil to retain nutrients, healthier and denser root system, improved ability to get nutrients, and reduces transplant shock. So, um, yeah, I want to try this because, um, you know, this year the gardening is getting real. So, I want to try to give my plants as good a chance to um, for success as I can. So, that's why I'm using this. And um, to be honest with you, since I've, well, last year I did start seeds inside. I started tomato and um, peppers, which weren't very successful. I started a bunch of lettuce and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of do have something to compare it to because I didn't use this kind of thing last year. Um, so I'll let you know after my plants get going if I think this was worth it or not. Okay. I know you can't see my head, but it's okay. I have a bucket of um, potting soil mix that I put together, and it's just some stuff that I had here. 
um, at the house that I kind of wanted to use up. It's mostly bagged potting soil, <coughs> but there's also some peat moss in there. And I've added a little bit of this um, blood meal in there. Not a lot, maybe, because I had this five gallon bucket um, filled up to about here and I probably added about a half a cup of that. That may not even be helpful, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna add a little bit of this inoculant in here. Just gonna sprinkle it around where it gets on the roots. I'm gonna put my in there. Fill this in. Y'all, I can't wait till I get a greenhouse. It's all good. I'm going to make a little hole. Add a little of this. Gonna get one of these. Just like that. So I'm gonna do that for all of these other ones and I'll be back in a second. All right, um, I have all of them planted. They're all watered in and uh, ready to go. Um, I do think though, I think I'm gonna try to put them in my window instead of under the grow light because they did really well. That's where they sat most of the time while they were in the mason jar getting roots and they seem to like that. So um, I've got, um, I'll just show you. I've got these two windows right here in my dining. Yeah, those two windows right there. That, <laughs> so that one over there and this one right here in my dining room that I can set them in. I'll just have to rearrange some stuff over there to put them over there. But um, yeah, uh, I'm pretty excited. And depending on how they do um, while they're in these pots will, I guess, determine the success of this experiment. Um, but so far, we're doing pretty good. Uh, so, yeah. If you haven't ever propagated anything, which I had never done that before, um, but if you have never propagated anything, give it a try. This was actually pretty easy. Um not a lot to it. So, um, and yeah, I will definitely let you know what I think about this when um, these start taking off. And I'm so excited. Isn't it so cute? It's so cute. I think I will name this one Hercules. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a great day and um, be blessed. Talk to you later. Bye.